community is unity. And one thing that makes Durham so sacred is the amount of human beings that that want better for our world. You know, there's so many freedom fighters here. There's so many people here that are creating those spaces for um, black and brown small businesses. And there are so many people who are um, fighting for, for small businesses and curators to get those resources so we can be successful in this late stage capitalist white supremacist world. You're listening to Honey and Hustle, a video podcast that inspires the dreamers, creators, and hustlers to make a business from their passions. I'm Angela Hollowell, and I'm a visual storyteller based in Durham, North Carolina. I sit down with creative entrepreneurs, nonprofit founders, and small business owners as they share their stories, the lessons they've learned throughout their careers, and how they've worked to make a positive impact. Hey everyone, my name is Angela Hollowell. I am your host here at Honey and Hustle. And today I am joined by the magical fairy princess herself, Jackie of Wonderpuff. Jackie, thank you so much for being here with me today. Hey girl, <laughs> how are you? I'm good, I am good. So me and Jackie yeah. ran into each other a very, very long time ago at one of my favorite places in Durham, which is um, Queenie's and Kingfisher. Um, mm. And we've just been spreading her magical fairy tale dust all over Durham. But for people who don't know and who are curious about the Durham versus everybody shirt, can you tell us a little um, bit about, there it is. Oh, you peeped that. I think, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Can you tell people a little bit about like how Wonder Puff got started and why that feels so akin to like who you are as a person? Yes, yes. Well, I'd love to start off by saying thank you for sharing space with me. Honey and Hustle have been, you know, you have been connected with really profound, wonderful, loving entrepreneurs in Durham and beyond and um, very proud of you and wishing you so much success in your podcast. And I'm really very, very grateful to share space with you today because I feel like we've been trying to do this for like the past 80 years and now we're here today. Um, like Angela said, my name is Jackie Morin. I go by she, her, and I am um, half of Wonder Puff. I um, established this small business of sugary confection with my business partner and husband, uh, Reem. And yeah, we love Durham. We love the Bull City. And Wonder Puff could not exist in a place other than this wonderful city. Um, I was introduced to cotton candy over a decade ago. Uh, me and Reem, we, were, we grew up in South Florida. Uh, he's from Miami and I'm from Broward, uh, which is next door to each other. So I just tell people I'm from Miami because they wouldn't know where Miramar or Pembroke Pines is unless you are familiar with South Florida. Uh, and so I was introduced to a cotton candy company when I was volunteering at a nonprofit organization with my baby sister, who's now a wonderful chef living in Asheville. Shout out to Jasmine, shout out to Dreamvote for just being radically her and wonderful. And I remember no one touching this cotton candy machine. And I'm just like, it's after 12 o'clock. I haven't had my sugar fix for the day. No one's touching this cotton candy machine. So I'm going to go ahead and play with it myself. And so I poured this pink, extravagant, electric pink sugar into the machine, pressed the button, pressed the heater, and sugar just poof, flew out. And I'm just like, this is a whole vibe. And I just started spinning and twirling. And the moment I started spinning and twirling the cotton candy, the families of the nonprofit that was there started to like form a line. All the kids were just like, oh, it's cotton candy. And I did some research extensively and, and saw that cotton candy was becoming a super hot commodity for private events such as weddings and birthdays. And people from all over the world were creating their own small um, sugar confection in their community. And I'm just like, this will be one very wonderful to do um, 
just not in Miami. And so when we moved to Durham seven years ago, me and Reem, uh, we knew that it was time to bring my sugary dreams to the Bull City. And so we've been spinning cotton candy for the past six years ever since. And um, it's been pretty wonderful. Yes, we definitely want to give Reem his flowers because, first of all, he was not excited to meet me, but, you know, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is just, that's just a water sign, Pisces uh, man for you. They are just calm and cool, wavy in the water. So I hope you did not take offense to that. Not at all, because he created my favorite flavor, which is the jasmine tea, which I love and highly encourage anyone to try mm-hmm. if they're in the area or to buy mm-hmm. online mm-hmm. and it just kind of speaks to like your palate and like a little bit of like how you bring your personality into the flavors that you guys have created so can you talk to me a little bit about like how you come up with the flavors and like how you've kind of molded wonder puff into your own custom confectionery business yeah so one thing that we really pride ourselves in when it comes to our sugar is that it is vegan artificial free artificial ingredients like coloring we it's just yeah it's just pure cane bone char vegan bone char free vegan sugar and as and as also our ingredients and so when we are making our flavors uh reem likes to move extremely intentional he is an audio designer sound engineer a producer musician and so that 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 need for perfection um has really oozed into our business when it comes to our actual product. And if it wasn't for him, um, y'all would just be getting regular store-bought cotton candy uh, sugar if it was for me. So I'm very grateful that uh, Reem, um, you know, is the scientist when it comes to creating sugar. And it's all about, you know, what is different and unique. So when we first started our first couple of years of operating Wonder Puff, um, we started off with like some simple basic flavors that are still a staple to our menu today. So salted caramel is a banger, uh, mango, uh, everyone loves raspberry mojito, even though that's not really uh, a regular uh, flavor. Um, but we kind of really go in and we just move with a lot of intention. Um, and so we're not really just grabbing things and mixing them together. Uh, we're thinking about things that we've experienced in real life, um, like what what we eat that we like and and try to you know, find inspiration through that. Uh, for example, uh, we used to sell a very popular flavor alongside with the jasmine flower um, is orange cardamom. And that was curated by my sister, um, Jasmine, who like we wanted to pay homage to our culture uh, because we're West Indian and we, you know, cardamom is a very important spice in our household. And then we, we have also Haitian cake, which represents our Haitian culture. Uh, and that is butter, vanilla, rum, and another rest, another ingredient that Reem would know. So, um, you know, my bad, I don't know what's all in the Haitian cake, but everyone loves it. And it's one of my favorites. And so, yeah, that's that's how uh, that's how we get inspiration through our sugar making. Lovely. I love it. And a lot of your, you know, taste testers, your first, you know, um, people who experience your cotton candy, you see them in person. I believe you started with pop ups and doing like, you know, pop ups at events before going to, you know, focusing on the e-commerce store during the pandemic. So can you talk to me about kind of like those first kind of like customer interactions and like how that helped you curate kind of the events that you went to and then how you shifted to, you know, kind of how you can create that experience that, you know, people love and enjoy to that online shopping experience. I know that was like a big question, but it kind of. No, no. Yeah. I hold space for it. Um, Yeah. So when we started Wonder Puff, we did lots of free events, mostly um, with black and brown curators. Uh, We gave a lot of our services to um, either black or brown curators or black and brown spaces. 
And that's how we really, uh, we were able to get our business out there, um, kind of leaning on the old, uh, you know, word of mouth kind of experience. And so we would truck along with our cotton candy cart and ask people like, hey, can 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 we vent here? Um, and this was like right, this was like on the rise of like, you know, marketings and markets before you had to spend hundreds of dollars to, to be a vendor. Um, since we've been doing this for such a long time, we, I would, you know, ask businesses, can I share space with them? And they would say yes, and I would give of our services for free or um, charge little, very little uh, to the patrons who would partake in our cotton candy. And that really helped open the door um, in connecting with other black and brown businesses and curators. And, you know, if I'm going to give anything for free, it might as well be cotton candy to my black and brown people. So that was very important uh, for us to do. And then slowly but surely, we started getting asked to do vegan markets and regular local markets. And that's how we were able to connect with our community members. Uh, that's when many people uh, discovered that they can have cotton candy in their offices and their weddings. And so that's how we were able to have, you know, clients were, were through those markets and like a lot of many small businesses, um, who, who are vendors. Uh, and so I think that's pretty cool. Uh, we also started to do, um, vet, we also started to vend in a much more larger scale. So, you know, we would go to Atlanta and do Afropunk a couple times. Uh, we would go to New York cause I just love New York. She's like, you know, next to Durham, you know, actually New York was my first love, but, uh, Durham is my true love. And uh, I would ask Reem, like, hey, can we drive? Because, you know, from North Carolina to New York is, is literally a half day's trip. And so we would pack up our car full of sugar in the cotton candy machine and we just go to the city and, you know, bring our sugary magic to, to the Big Apple, which is really cool. Um, and that's where we started to realize, wow, we have a really awesome product and there's a potential opportunity to like, maybe we can make this bigger than just marketing outside of birthdays and weddings and vendors markets and stuff. Yeah, that is crazy. Did not know you went to Afropunk. So shout out to Afropunk for having your girl. Yeah. Um, Yes, we're not going to get into that, but I am excited to hear about like how you took it from like these sizable cities. I mean, if we're talking Miami, Durham, Atlanta, New York, these aren't like small places. So you're getting mm. a really big market of people <clears throat> at one time with each event. And so mm. I love how you were like, some people still do this and consider that to this day, like, oh, we went the old way of, of word of mouth, but like word of mouth is evergreen that's everlasting that is the past the present and the future that's really the best way you know what i mean because it's like not only follow you on instagram and maybe bought from you on instagram one time it's like no i met this person i got to actually get a feel for who she is like mm -hmm. you know it's a different experience when you actually meet someone in person and can vouch for their brand mm -hmm. from like you know, versus like Instagram, like, oh, I tried it, you know, it, it was fine. But, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have a personal connection to the people who created it because you're just not right. there. Right. Um, so, again, going back to that, like, you know, obviously over the pandemic, weren't a whole lot of events to be vending. And you mm -hmm. guys kind of switched to, um, I wouldn't say switch, but like, obviously you had to focus on maybe more e-commerce sales. And I know you made some kind of new products for um, people buying online. Can you tell me mm -hmm. a little bit about how you guys kind of like, again, are continuing to like grow and progress and like meet the needs of your customers through that? Right, yeah. So we all know that 2020 was, yeah. And, um, you know, aside from the world viscerously violently changing because of COVID, uh, small businesses took took such a huge major hit while, you know, our politicians and big banks were getting PPP loans. And it's just like, okay, well, what about the small businesses who have been doing this for, for decades and who 
are trying to keep their employees like what what happens to to, to us and 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 while so many businesses were being closed in 2020 other businesses like myself were going all the way up um, because everyone was at home. So because everyone was at home, uh, they had a lot of time to buy cotton candy. So we were making cotton candy by the hundreds, if not thousands um, every month. And it was incredible. Uh, it did stop <laughs> once everyone went outside, but um, to receive so much support uh, during the lockdown uh, of 2020, it really helped um, one, not only drive, drive our sales, but created uh, st sustainability in a way that we've never seen before. Uh, and we were able to afford housing. And, you know, that was very, very important to us. And um, still one of my most fondest memories when it comes to entrepreneurship and, and seeing how people were so intentional with, with, with consumerism at home and, and intentional with, with supporting black and brown businesses. And not only that, people really loved our products. I really, I do wish that energy still exists because it's day and night now from 2020 during during lockdown to now, the way people are consuming is very, very different. Um, I would say, unfortunately, that many people, they forgot about small businesses. And, you know, that is unfortunate. And um, we, we also took a, a hit um, after all that. Um, after all those wonderful sales, you know, it's kind of like the whole Black Lives Matter movement and, 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 and um, corporations kind of capitalizing off of that and, you know, trying to rise, you know, raise black and brown people's voices. But I guess it was no longer trending. And so people just kind of went back to their everyday program, uh, which is something that we're seeing now in our present day. Thank you so much for watching and listening to the show. Whether you're a day one fan or day 100 fan, I'm so glad that you found Honey and Hustle and have decided to stick along for the ride. As a thank you, I wanted to give you a little gift that this show has so graciously given me. The ability to continue to connect with thought leaders, industry leaders, business owners, and other entrepreneurs, no matter where I am. Link offers a digital business card that is a natural extension of my website and social media platforms that allows me to easily send people to strategic landing pages so they can learn a little bit more about me, the resources I offer, and how we can continue to stay connected. When you click the link below in the description, you'll get 15% off any of their wearables, phone taps, and hopefully the last physical business card you'll ever need. Thank you so much again for supporting the show and our show sponsor, Link. Yeah, yeah, a thousand percent. I mean, like, it's very unfortunate because like at the end of the day, sometimes the best thing you can do for your small business is to get a job. But like when you don't feel like welcome and supported in that job, then it just makes it like twice as hard because then it's like, okay, I'm not being supported as a small business owner. Right. And now I don't feel, feel supported in the workplace. So like, something's got to give, like, you know what I mean? In order to have like a sustainable income either way, you know? Okay. Right, exactly. And so, uh, again, so it's 2023 now. We're filming this in April. Um, you got a space at Boxshard RTP, which was finished over the pandemic, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, talk to me a little bit about that, because Boxshard RTP is kind of a different retail space. Yes. Yes. So uh, Boxshard RTP is a shipping container food court space. So it's an outdoor food court. And um, yeah, we said yes to the Boxshard at the end of 2019 and didn't really move into our space until 2021 because of the pandemic. And um we are neighbors to awesome black and brown other retailers. So there's Meet and Gray's Aya, who's my sweet sister. I love her so much. And then there's Karina from Honey Press, uh, and she is South Asian owned. And um, it's the community in Box Yard is phenomenal because we're all small business owners, and majority of the the majority of the owners 
are in the space every day. You know, we're really we're really there in the trenches with our employees. And um, it has been extremely unique to open up a storefront during the pandemic because 2021 we're still in a pandemic. 2022, we're still in a pandemic. And 2023 right now, COVID is is still here. And so just, I don't know how, I don't know how we did it and I don't know how we're doing it, but by the mercy and love of the universe, we, um, you know, we have a small team of cotton candy connoisseurs and we still keep the lights on. And I think um, this is probably our best work yet is creating this, you know, sacred disco space full of sugar. And we are really thrilled to have our own physical space because not many small businesses are granted that opportunity because everything is so expensive (laughs) and it's just not fair for us. Um, And so, yeah, uh, we've been there this July would mark two years and it will also mark the last month that we will be at Box Yard. Um, as much as much magic as we we created in the space, we are ready to expand and and do big big bigger things. And um, yeah, we'll be closing the store in July thirty first. Inshallah. Oh man, yeah, that's a beautiful run though, a two year run, which is technically four years in the making if we're starting back 2019. So mm-hmm. um, it's been a long time coming. That's a long time to think, you know, it's a long time to like try it out, see how, see how the clothes fit on in a commercial space mm-hmm. and then kind of right. see like, okay, what do I like? What do I not like? What do I want next to look like? Right. Yeah. Uh, so talk to me a little bit about what you and Reem have cooking up, because just even since I've known you and known about Wonder Puff, like you guys have been really successful in the online space. You guys have the little glitter bombs for your champagne. You guys yes. have, you know, containers that people can get. And then, of course, I see you around town at pop up events. So like what what new experiences are you hoping to curate for people? Right. So uh, July would mark. So not only does our shop close in July, but it marks six years that we've been making cotton candy in the triangle, uh, especially particularly the wonderful Bull City. Um, I'm going to keep it real with you. I have no idea what's next. I don't know what the hell we're going to (laughs) do. And I'm I'm surrendering to it. and, and, and being gentle and kind with myself and realizing like, it's okay if we don't have all the answers, even though we live in a capitalist world where we need to be productive every day to survive. Um, I know that when we close the shop, Wonder Puff will continue to operate in a smaller scale. And, um, you know, I don't know exactly what where we'll be going next, but I do know that the goal is to go back to e-commerce one, to you know wholesale and 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 bring our cotton candy into into retail spaces because that's something that I've wanted to do for such a long time. But everything is so bloody expensive, so it's all about asking for help and utilizing and exhausting all of our resources. And I plan to do just that um, when when we close the shop, um, leaning on my community, asking people for resources, and 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 getting the ball rolling, and you know taking Wonder Puff in in a different different direction. Yeah, that's beautiful. I think this last I guess question slash comment I have is just based on. Um, something I heard a business owner say on a documentary that I was working on. And he said, I don't think we get anywhere without community. And he was speaking to, you know, the small business community, the local community of creators, but then also the people who are coming in and just kind of learning and moving here and really like recognizing the community that's here and wanting to contribute to that, you know, mm-hmm. as you know, an amplifier, as a consumer, as a creator, all those types of things. Like, and again, ending on your doing versus everybody's sure like you definitely have an affinity to Durham and the community that's here can you talk a little bit about why the Durham small business ecosystem is so special and so unique and has really provided the playground for you to like try all these different things out 
Right, right. Yeah, community is unity. And one thing that makes Durham so sacred is the, the amount of human beings that that want better for our world. You know, there's so many freedom fighters here. There's so many people here that are creating those spaces for um, black and brown small businesses. And there are so many people who are um, fighting for, for small businesses and curators to get those resources so we can be successful in this late stage capitalist white supremacist world. Um, Durham is the reason why Wonder Puff exists. And I really don't see Wonder Puff ever being anywhere else. And if she was to go somewhere else, you know, the, the headquarters will forever be in the Bull City. And, you know, it, it, was, it was Durham and, and everyone else outside of this wonderful city that helped funded our Kickstarter for when we opened our store. And I'm forever grateful for people, you know, not only um, people in Durham, but people everywhere who have shared the Wonder Puff, Wonder Puff experience with us, you know, just giving us a space to exist covered in sugar and giving us their hard dollars so we can stay sustainable. I think there's so much beauty in that because people don't need to spend money on cotton candy. You know, they don't need to share space with us, but, but they do and they have for the past almost six years and we don't take that lightly. Um, we hold every supporter, every client, every customer, we hold them very near and dear to our heart because this world needs so much radical love. And so we, we got to do it together as a people. And that's something that Wonder Puff really focuses on is not only being a sustainable business through sugar, but, you know, how can we make this world a safe space um, when there's so much pain, you know? Yeah, that's so beautiful. And I think that is just like a beautiful note to end on because we all need our happy place. And whether that is your physical business, whether that's your home, whether that's your circle of friends and family and loved ones, like it's so valid, it's so needed, and it's so important for you to be able to thrive in any environment. So thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And I really appreciate it. Thank you, girl. Thank you so much.